me about it was in Johannesburg I and mean, I remember being on the coach and I couldn't sleep or close my eyes because I was so like focused on looking out the window and seeing this amazing landscape. So Broaden Out the Horizons is a charity. It's a charity that set, was set up by Martha and I um, a few years ago. Uh, Linda and I are both teachers and we were both involved in global schools partnerships in our respective schools. And we became increasingly frustrated by the lack of funds that were available for global exchange trips. We've been in the space of about two hours we'd left this really really big city and we were in the middle of nowhere where there were like shanty houses and a, a lot of obvious poverty and it was I found it really really weird. For me personally I, you know traveling has been a huge broadener of my horizons um, and I think that's that was the, the motivation behind behind the charity and behind Martha and I's ideas of the charity. We actually know each other from working in Colombia originally so um, you know, our, we know we know each other from being abroad and from that, the experiences that gave us. I got goosebumps when I looked out of the window and I saw the most smallest children travelling up the same hill and their destination was the same as us, which was at school. And they had the biggest bags and we were on a coach and we were complaining about being scared, but they were walking barefoot with big bags up this hill. We also wanted uh, British children to kind of respect um, the young people in the countries that they're going to and to see that yes they are poorer but and they might be less developed but also that they have a lot to learn from them. They were really friendly <laughs> so I wasn't used to that because we're from in London and nobody's really that friendly here. So I was a bit surprised when they were all really rushing to greet us. For me and for Martha as well, the most important thing was the students meeting each other to be able to learn from each other and share, share similarities and learn from their differences. So when we did actually get to talk to them and we found out that we were so, so alike in terms of our ambitions and stuff we enjoyed to do and the way we communicated with us, what we did with our friends and it was really, really nice. I don't think it's too much to say that it can be life-changing. I got the students to prepare lessons to be able to share with the students when they got to South Africa. We decided for our drama lessons to incorporate drama and English together. One of the activities that we've done, which was a starter, was we used sentences to create freeze frames. They show us the way of teaching, they show us the way uh, of learning. So we gave them sentences and it was their job to create freeze frames from the sentences. It started very, very immediately on the first day. He looked out the window and he saw something shocking. <laughs> One of the children came out with um, a story that he'd written in one of the lessons that we taught and I just thought, wow, <laughs> I actually sort of taught something something and they've learned about something and it came from me. I honestly went as a teacher and I came back educated, you know, more than I ever thought I would be. When we were starting the charity, we set it up with the idea and the belief that we could uh, teach British students to appreciate education and the opportunities and resources that are given in this country, and we believe that uh, that's actually been achieved. I've learned a lot from people which I would have never met in my life. I thought it was great that our paths crossed, even if it was just for a little while. My favourite moment was actually the students coming back. <laughs> Welcome! As we came to this school, uh, let alone that uh, we were much excited about uh, getting inside the plane alone. Yolanda! Yolanda! <laughs> It was as if someone has told them something impossible. It was, it's been a culture shock for them. First tube ride. Yeah. First tube ride. Station is Leicester Square. I actually liked it when they came here because I was so shocked by the expression. I think they were so surprised with how busy it was. Just to see them smile, it kind of made me smile. 
My name is Luandil. My name is Brandon. My name is Musa. My name is Swam Kelly. I'm 13 years old. London is beautiful, big, huge, and it, it has got London Eye. I like London Eye. Our school is humongous compared to their school. In our school, we've got only two blocks. So this one is very big. They were shocked at the, um, the sports um, fields and everything because they, they don't have that. They just had hills and everything. It was sort of like a health hazard if so one of them like fell down the hill or something. If anybody asks you who I am, just stand up tall, look in the face and say, I'm hungry. <laughs> The idea for the song came from Helena. Me and Martha Braggins have been friends since I was five and she was four. So we went to the same school and we were pretty much inseparable. So when we were planning the trip, I was very excited to learn that Alison, our singing teacher at school, was keen to come because uh, I knew that the school at Magoba had um, a very good choir. Amen, amen, amen. Alison, the singing teacher, decided that she was going to teach the school a, a range of songs, of which the world's greatest was one. It was such an uplifting song, and I thought, well, why don't they must, if they're in teaching it, get them to sing it, and then I said randomly, and when they come back, we'll just record it. And then she said, well, maybe I'll ask Guy Chambers to see if he could do it. You know, produces Robbie Williams and writes most of what Robbie Williams' hits. A few months later, it, with Guy Chambers in the recording studios. I'm really looking forward to it this afternoon because I've never been in studio before, so I want to go there and do a great singer. I want to be great. I asked my friends up at studios, Tim, Burton, so he'll, he'll, he put in the bill for the coach, for the engineer. Guy came and did it for free and they pitched up and they sang the song, they learned the song. The whole atmosphere was kind of like, well. Really project no. Something that said to me this is such a success was seeing how Bethlehem was with Brandy in the recording booth and how she really helped Brandy overcome her terror and her nerves. If anybody asks you who, if anybody asks you who I am, just stand up tall, look him in the face and say. And I thought that's exactly what this is about, it's getting somebody how friendship can help and how we can help each other truly and profoundly. Thank you. Are you going to enjoy yourself? Yeah! Woohoo! Okay, let's go. Really good. I thought it was the best job. Mm, yeah. We've done a first song, Ooh. and uh, let's hope it's you've been brilliant. Thank you so much.
The biggest advocate and the best adversary, I feel, are the girls themselves. We changed, like all 10 of us, we changed so much. Learning from our differences has actually made me realise how similar the students here and on the other side of the world are. I've learned how to be a lot more resilient and I've learned a lot about the world. I'll just make sure that people from all walks of life understand each other. So it's had a huge impact on them as individuals and uh, when they came back they are very keen to share their newfound respect for education and to share that across the school. We felt like for them anything is possible if you set your mind to it. Education is important to me because education is a key to success. It's not easy to get employed when you are not well educated. Education is the only key to the future. It is the most powerful weapon to use in the world. That whole South Africa trip really opened my eyes to how people are different to me. I didn't know what was going to affect me as much as it actually did. I value having a pencil or having a rubber because for them it was, to give them a pen or a pencil, it was an amazing thing, it was like a luxury. They're limited over there for opportunities but here there's a wide range, I live in London. It makes me want to like seek those opportunities and get involved in them as well. I think everyone that's met them since they've been back and has seen them speak has just been so impressed, haven't they, by their maturity and their ability to speak about the experiences they had there and what they've learned from it. Absolutely, yeah. And they've also um, become more globally aware, so in terms of development issues, and they're very keen to carry on that, their newfound knowledge in the future. The thing I've enjoyed the most about taking part in the trip to South Africa is definitely the people that I've met because they're definitely going to stay with me forever. I saw things that I've never seen before. I broadened my horizon. I'm so happy because I broadened my horizon. <laughs> <laughs>